We're going to continue looking at factoring today, and um, we're going to focus mainly on trinomials. So we're going to focus on different expressions that have three terms, and most of them are going to fall under this general idea of a quadratic, um, which we've seen with quadratic functions, and we'll relate them to those eventually. But the big thing with this, and they talk about this in the top part, um, you have to be good at these two skills to be really good at factoring, which is the ability to accurately multiply binomials using FOIL, um, or, and or, uh, you need to be able to be really good with sign numbers, so multiplying positive and negative numbers, knowing the relationships and the type of answers you get out. Now, I'm not going to do all four of these, but again, they want us to write these in simplest AX squared plus BX plus C form. So I'm really just going to foil these out. I know some people use the box. Feel free to use the box if you want to. Um, so like in this case, 3x times 5x is 15x squared. 3x times 7 would be 21x. 2 times 5x would be 10x. And 2 times 7 would be 14. Then I can combine any like terms, which I do have in the middle. So this would be 15x squared plus 31x plus 14, and that would be my ax squared plus bx plus c form. Um, and then, like, I'll try c as well. Similar to what we just talked about. Of course, with this one, we got negatives. So we got 5x times x, which would be 5x squared. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So when I combine like terms, which are the middle two, I have negative 14x, and then I have the 5x squared first and 8 last. So being able to take this and get into that trinomial form, multiplying quickly, uh, making sure you get your signs right on your numbers, those are the biggest things with factoring. If you struggle with those, you're going to struggle with factoring. But if you're pretty good with it, then you're going to do pretty well at factoring. So let's do some examples and talk about what are the easiest ways to factor. Now, they talk a little bit on this paper about unintelligent guesses. Um, I mean, you really got to start somewhere. Uh, I feel that the only unintelligent guess would be to sit there and stare at it. You're not really taking a guess at all. Um, you know, there's always that idea of working backwards. You can use guess and check. Um, but let's take a look and hop right into exercise three. Now, what I tell my students to do, and I've told for years, is you want to start with your last number. And you want to think of a pair of numbers that multiply that last number. So in this case, our last number is negative 35. So you want to think about, first off, if it's a negative last number, that means that we're going to have to have a positive and a negative in our factors. And negative 35, one of the first factors I think of is 7 and 5. And then our x's come from the x squared. So I want to think right now, are those numbers going to add to the middle one? So we got to get them to multiply to the last one, and they have to. The two numbers have to add to the middle term. So positive two. Well, I have positive seven and negative five, and seven minus five is going to be two. So I know right now that this is going to be correct. So you really have to check those two things, and that's why they call it a guess and check technique, because you have to go through and eliminate wrong possibilities. Same thing with B. Um, there's cases where you can goof up the first couple of times and not find something that works. But in the case of B, like I'm going to show you a wrong answer right now. I know right now that, well, 24. Let's try 6 and 4. It's probably the one that people would think of first. But if I do 6 and 4, I'm going to get 10, and my middle number is 11. So I'm going to go ahead and try a different pair. I'm going to try 8 and 3. Well, 8 plus 3 is 11, and I didn't talk about this part yet, but that 24 is positive. So it means my signs are going to have to both be positive, because my middle term is positive as well. So that one doesn't work, but this one does. Now C, 
C is what I'm talking about kind of with B. Um, for 22, you have 11 and 2, and it's a positive 22. But see how that middle number is negative? So that means that we're going to have to add two negatives together. So my signs in this one are going to be negative and negative. And for 22, my first obvious guess would be 11 and 2. So if I have negative 11 and negative 2, I'm going to get that negative 13. So these would be the factors for C. And then D, like we talked about with A, it's a negative last number, which in that case means that we're going to have a, have a positive and a negative. X and X in the beginning. And then for 50, my first instinct would be to do 10 and 5. So if I put the 10 here and 5 here, when I add those together, I actually get positive 5. So that's actually not the right guess. Which means that if you get the right number but the wrong sign, you're going to have to flip the signs to get that correct value. So, there's four basic examples okay, of how to factor. Now we're going to do a couple more that are a little more difficult. Now, if you look at exercise 3A, 3A has a number that's not 1 in front. So what that means is that when we try to set these up and start taking our guesses, we're not going to have just have x and x. We're going to have to have a, a pair in the front that multiplies to that first number. So 3x and x can give us 3x squared. Now, because I have a negative 40, well, I know I'm going to have to have a 1 positive and 1 negative, and it could be something I might have to switch as I do guesses. But let's check with um, 40. My first instinct right now is going to be to do 5 and 8. Now, i got to want to check the middle two terms, so I have 5x for 5 times x, and then I have for this, I have 3x times negative 8, which is negative 24x. So if I have negative 24x and 5x, that's going to give me negative 19x. And I have positive 19. So that's telling me right now that I'm close. But what I'm going to have to do now is switch my signs around. So now I have negative 5 and positive 24, which is going to be positive 19. So, and any guesses you make? Kind of like I'm doing, don't completely cross them out. Just kind of put a line through them. Because um, you want to keep a record of those, so when you are guessing, you don't accidentally make the same guess more than once. Uh, and then for B, it's 2x squared. So again, similar. So I'm going to need a 2x and x. Now I'm thinking about my last number, which is 18. I'm going to try 6 and 3. I look at it and I see that middle term is negative. So that means that, okay, we got to have the same sign. So in this case, these both are going to be negative signs. So for this right now, I have negative 3 and negative 12, which would be negative 15. So I have negative 3x and negative 12x, which is that negative 15x. So in this case, this first guess does work. Now, again, I've done these before, so I kind of know where to go with it, but you may have to make four or five guesses before you get it right, which don't really worry about. So we're going to hold off with those examples right now um, and try each of those on the next page and see how you do with them. And again, record the guesses that you make so that if you do end up making mistakes, we can kind of figure out where those mistakes are and eliminate them.